explain something to you. I'm going to tell you what makes this whole thing worse. The fact that Great Millstone would hop on the bandwagon and say these guys are right. See, the good the good Negroes, the good step and fetch and uncle, they know better than that. They know it demonstrates a weakness in their movement when they disagree, even when they blatantly see the bullshit. But these idiots at Great Millstone don't even have that much sense to do that because they're idiots who are filled with the spirit of Satan, jealousy, envy, and hatred who have lost the oil, right? That's how dumb they're. Vocab's good Negroes have more sense than you idiots, right? Who teach rape on street corners. No, we ain't forgot that. Right? Who teach rape on street corners. No, we ain't forgot that. Right? Who teach rape on street corners. No, we ain't forgot that. Right? Who teach rape on street corners. No, we ain't forgot that. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Did you know that you ran? No, no. Sakari, what is it, San Francisco? <laughs> ran. He that doubts is damned if he eat, because he eats not of faith. For whatever is not of faith is sin. We got you. So, right, right, right. So I want to know if you want to backtrack because I said whatever is not of faith is sin. You said the leader of the camp right now said that's not true. You don't agree with that. I but agree I just with the I just said that earlier. So, so whatever is not of faith. Everything Paul says isn't of the Holy Spirit. That's a fact. All right. All right. So an end of discussion. And if these guys don't believe in the full Bible. I just read is not true. It's not the word of God. It's not the word of God. It's not the word of God. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone, also an honors to you brethren, you followers of the truth, and shalom to the elect. Anyway, I want to go in this video uh, that I've been seeing going around. Uh, I believe Apostle Tahar, I saw it at first, of the Sakari, who has now said that GMS has lost the oil, right? <laughs> so anyway, anybody who says that Great Millstone or us as Israelites, we're just hating on other groups. You know, we um, we hate our fellow brother. This is an example of hatred. Because we just said that the Christians were right on some of the things that they were saying about faith, right? The first commandment is dealing with faith, right? To love the Lord with all your heart, and all your might and strength and soul. That is dealing with faith. We're just teaching that the law, faith is part of the law. When you go into it, it's about faith is what will save you. Not so much the law because you could do everything right. And then when the time of Jacob's trouble, which I believe they teach in the in the, um, Karagma, you're going to need that faith more so than the law. You're going to need faith. That's why the book of James said, faith without works is dead. Right? This is what Paul was going back and forth about. Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? God forbid. This is what happened when you leave your true teachers and you go and you start your own thing and you become foolish. You know? you've been you Your wisdom has become moth-eaten and cankered and corrupted. Okay? So anyway, I just want to go through a couple of scriptures real quick. Uh, Timothy 1 and 19, holding faith and good conscience, which some have put away concerning faith, have made a shipwreck, you know, because a lot of people in his groups will teach that we must follow God's law, but the transgression, sin is the transgression of the law, but faith is also a big part of um, keeping the law to a degree, you know, because 
you had Jakes who kept the law, but they wasn't worried about faith. They was using the law as a tool to gain advantage, as a tool for power and corruption. So it has to be about faith. Okay? In fact, uh, let me get a scripture on that real quick. And, you know, this is shameful. And this is why these Christian groups, now they can all come together. They found the weak weakness and a crack in their doctrine. And so now they're throwing out the letters of Paul, some book of Hebrews, and various other things. When the Lord left it there for us, for our un understanding. So they decide to pick whatever they want to pick and make a doctrine. Right? So let's go to um, Romans, looks like 3, 27. It says, where is boasting then? Okay? It is excluded by what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. Right? Therefore, we conclude that a man is not justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Okay? Because you can't have say you have faith and then somebody throw the damn pork sandwich in front of you and you're hungry and then you just go eat it because you say, hey, I got faith. A part of that faith is upholding the law to the best of your ability. Verse 31, do we make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we established the law. So these guys, the San Francisco Sicarius, got to be one of the worst out of the Sicari group. But that's what they teach, that it's not about faith. This is crazy. Now, if you was a group that teaching you ain't got to worry about Jacob's trouble, you ain't got to worry about the times of trouble, you ain't got to worry about having faith, that's different. Then you can just go straight with the law and say, hey, it's all about the law. All we got to do is follow God's laws and then we'll be good. But men were tested. Even Yahweh was tested. So I don't know where the hell he get that from. Anyway, um, it says here, Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 4 and 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall, heap, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. So these guys, the, where they got this from, I didn't have time to put all the other clips in, but this guy, um, I forgot his name. This other guy that they learned from doing these panels, he's the one that, Divine Prospect is his name. He's the one that pushed that doctrine and ideology to the Hebrews wasn't good. And then he said that 1 Corinthians 14 oppresses women. So then these guys in these debates and these doctrines heap to themselves having teachers of itchy ears and then they start getting too in depth into trying to be deep that they their um, cistern cracked if you want to call it that and the oil leaked out. Okay? So when you go into that word sound we know what endure means to continue. We can also go into this word, teaching, um, teach what I've been taught, what they've been taught. We can go into this word, um, do, uh, sound, which I know what that is, but I'll read it. I'll read it again. I think it means something about without error or mixture. G fifty one ninety eight to be in good health of Christians whom opinions are free. From any mixture or error of one who keeps the graces uh, and it is strong, right? So these guys then got weak. If anything, their oil leaked out, you know. So now they're reaching and grabbing and like the foolish virgins, you know. So anyway, let's head on over here to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. He says, by the way, you can look this up. I did videos on it. This group, Sakari says, that bearing false witness is not lying. This is what they said. But they said that we go on street corners and teach to rape. This is frustration with these guys. They have nothing else. So this is what they must do. 
Don't get mad at us that we become your enemy because we tell you the truth. You're just mad at us because we're saying that they were right on that. And that's not hard because that's what was taught all along in the so-called Christian church to know that. In fact, I don't even think that was taught. They didn't teach us anything. But it's not hard to figure out. Okay? And let's say everything Paul said was not the word of the Most High, but this, what Paul has said about faith, that's not the word of the Most High? That's crazy. Because the Most High has always used men um, to do the do you know to bring forth and do the works of the Lord, right? So, anyway, let's go to um, let me go um to Deuteronomy twenty-two and twenty-nine, twenty-eight. So we don't go out on the street corners and teach to rape. I don't know where these guys get this stuff from. I ought to be arrested for that, man. Um, that high level of slander, witchery. You know, you're trying to paint an image that we're actually out going out and teaching people to rape people. We don't teach rape on the corners. Nor have we ever taught to go rape anyone or to rape. Never said that. This is sick, man. This is sick. But they can't answer it. Deuteronomy 22 and 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin which is not betrothed and lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found, um, it goes on to say, I'm just trying to breeze through this. Then shall the man that lay with her um, shall give the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver, right? So this is not something that was practiced all too common. But if it happened... And a man took a woman that was not betrothed. He, he had to make sure he could take care of her. Now, when you go up a couple of verses before that, it says if a man find a, a damsel which is betrothed unto a husband, and then he force her. That's where the difference comes. It becomes a force. Let me read it. Um, if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out into the gate and of the city, and ye shall stone them, and they die. The damsel, because she cried not, now if she cried, then it wouldn't be, but she cried not because she liked it, or they had something secretly going. Being in the city, and a man, because he have humbled his neighbor's wife, so that shall put away evil from among you. That has nothing to do um, that has nothing to do with what we see in the 29th verse. It's a di distinction between if she's betrothed and then if she's not betrothed, right? There's the difference. Betrothed, belonging to a husband, and not belonging to a husband. That's why you had do two different distinctions of what the punishment shall be or what judgment or how to handle that situation, Right? It's two different ones, and we're going to get into the translations. And let me go on a little bit more. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and a man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lie with her shall die, right? That's the difference, because why? Because unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is, uh, there is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. You go to 28, this way, the word is lay hold on her, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin which is not betrothed and lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found, and then it goes on to say, he shall give the damsel father 50 shekels of silver. Now, again, this is old English and a lot of people aren't understanding to how the old English works, right? These were just words that, that put in there describing the situation later on. But when you go to the older English, like when you read the same scripture, it says if a man find a damsel that is a virgin which is not betrothed and commits lechery with her then he should give the damsel father 50 shekels of silver when you look up lechery it means sexual act period now we're going to go into a couple other translations just to bring it on home 
He um, it says new the, the NIV even says if a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and rapes her, and they be discovered, then he shall give the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver. The Christian Standard Bible. So now we know the Christians can't come up with this against us because it's in the Christian Standard Bible. If a man encounters a young woman, a virgin which is not engaged, and takes hold of her and rapes her, and they be discovered, then he shall give the damsel for this 50 shekels of silver. Now, the Aramaic Bible says, and if a man finds a virgin girl that was not engaged, and he will take her, and he will have sexual intercourse with her, and they be found. You get the point. The Peshitta Holy Bible Translation and if a man find a virgin as a girl which is not engaged and he will take her and he shall have sexual intercourse with her and they will be and they be found then he should get the damsel father's 50 seconds of silver so the majority of the translations don't even say lay hold we caught it we understood it we know it but when you go even to the 1500s the 1300s the, even the, uh, the Geneva Bible of 1599 says takes her it don't even say lay hold it wasn't until the 1611 bible that they says uh, lay hold which is still understandable what lay hold mean look it up it means to catch to seize and there's various other translations that says to seize her so anyway that that's to the point it's become so easy for us going over this over and over that we can kind of quote it and go over it and one more scripture i want to say isaiah 58 and 1 we go out there to the highways and hedges it says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and shoot my people dead transgression. Right? This is what we do. We're, we're lifting up our voice, and we're showing our own people that's in the truth your transgression. You're saying uh, that we teach rape. That's a transgression. That's a lie. You're committing a lie. You're committing a sin. Right? Um, you're saying the letters of Paul is um, everything Paul says, not the word of God. The word of the Most High, you say in the book of Hebrews is not right. Various other books, you know, you're making up doctrines. You know, it's not the word of the Lord. You know, so that's why we say we crying out to correct you and get your ass back on, on point. Until then, those Christians are going to keep making you look foolish. They're going to walk up to you and have you put your signs on your back. And you're going to have to take orders and roll off on down the street. That's all I have. You know, and at, at, at this point, I don't know why anybody deal with them and go back and forth with them. That's all I have on that, Shalom.